Hey everyone, Max at 343 Labs here. Today I'd like to show you a clip by John Selway, one of our instructors, where he shows you how to make experimental beats using a Max for Live vector delay device. Now this clip is taken from 343 TV, which airs multiple times per week right here on our channel. And if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe below. Let's get into it. All right, let's take a look at this. We're gonna blow this up real big. I like being able to zoom in on my computer here. Um, actually, this is <laughs> this is a thing. Some of these Max for Live devices, they have so many parameters, and in these in these little Ableton Live sized devices on the screen, they can be really small. I wish somehow more of these developers would make bigger interfaces, like you know. The wavetable synth in live, you can click on that button and expand it to the size of your script, your whole, you know, session view, and that's amazing. Um, that would make synths like this that are so visually oriented would be really good to have a bigger display. But you know, maybe it's a CPU thing, a complex thing, complexity with that Max for Live programming. I don't know. So you can see what we're looking at. You can there's all these little individual dots that represent grains of sound. There's 16 grains total that are being modulated and you got on the right side a few different views this one is where we're looking at the sample i just dropped in a sample <laughs> honestly i don't even remember what i just grabbed something randomly out of my library and it's kind of fun to do that actually just sort of throw it in there and see what happens with this type of uh, sound design all right so We'll reduce the number of grains. A lot less going on, right? Let's go back up. Increase the number of grains. We're going to get a more complex, dense sound. Can scale. The range of modulation, the speed of modulation and the output. I've also got a, a spectral time on here. Let's turn that off for a second and hear exactly what we're listening to. So actually a lot of that spaciness we were hearing was coming from the delay, from the time, the spectral time. All right, so that's our sample. Here we can go into some control over the grains themselves. And the size you can have in milliseconds, if I reduce the size, you start hearing shorter grains and it speeds up, it becomes more continuous. If I increase the size, you're going to get larger grains. This is a pretty typical of granular synthesis. It's going to space them out more and you're going to hear longer phrases, so to, so to speak. Uh, where I had it before, though, is you can quantize them to note lengths or beats. And depending on your sample, you may be able to get some rhythmic patterns out of these things. I gotta say, it is tricky, though, to get all of these devices. You can do some cool rhythmic patterns with them, especially, you know, but it can be tricky to get precise timing. Uh, that's one thing I discovered while I was playing around with this. Okay. On the bottom here, you have some modulation destinations. So you can choose which parameters are being moved around on this XY axis. So you can see you have panning, the filter frequency. So the up and down axis is modulating the brightness and the darkness of each grain. And the left and right is panning them. You have a, a diagonal kind of movement that's controlling the start time, so it's moving the, the position of the grains around in the sample. You have volume or gain, and then size, larger or smaller. So smaller grains are going to hear little tinier pieces moving around. Larger grains are going to hear more of the original sound sort of overlapping. 
So that's kind of pretty. And then, so I, I kind of came up with this evolving, random, sort of semi-random kind of flute sample here, and then I'm spacing it out with this uh, spectral time effect that's really nice in uh, Ableton Live, just to make it sort of more ambient. Now, let's hear what this is going along with. Let's play around with this vector grain a little bit. You have um, these controls you'll see in a couple of the different devices. These are more complex kind of control over the physical attributes. This one has a mag magnet element to it, where you have a pos positive and negative charges basically to these particles and they can attract each other or repel each other. There's an attractor, this square in the middle is uh, Basically, you know, it's a magnet that can pull at the particles depending on its strength and the positive and negative charge of the particles. See, right now they're all moving towards the square. And this is controlling where the grains are in the sample, basically. So right now you'll see them, they're all kind of concentrating at this point around, the, more around the end of the sound. And yeah, that's pretty much par for the course with any kind of granular synth or sampling is that you need to be really aware of what the sound is in the beginning and what you put into it is what you can get out of it, so to speak. I agree about the bongos, uh, future class DMV. Um, any like randomizing MIDI to create drum complex drum parts is always fun, especially like if you don't know how to play very well, you can you know generate some rhythms really easy, easily on a drum kit, resample that, and then you know mine that for the really good drum loops. Travarsi has been using Max for Live with his modular. Absolutely, use this with you know bring in s signals from your modular and process them with this. That'd be amazing. All right. I like this nice chill start and this is just the beginning like you know getting a little deep and whoo I listen to that and it's like taking my mind away it's a little bit hard to focus on streaming and talking to you guys with this like really chill hypnotic music in the background thanks for watching and don't forget 343 TV goes live right here on our YouTube channel several times per week and if you want to learn more about music production or just want to join our community you can find more information at 343labs.com or 343labs.de for our German website. See you next time.